Okay guys, there you go. So something a little bit different today. Um, so we have here Ed's TC3. Hey Ed, if you're watching, how's it going? So um, the fuel tank was screwed, so he happened to have another old, new old stock one to throw in there. And the engine that's in there, um, I actually just took the head off. I forgot to uh, press record when I did that, so stupid me. Sorry about that, but it's actually an LRP18. Um, believe it or not, it's actually a real thing. Uh, rare as rocking horse shit nowadays. I mean, they haven't made them since, uh, well, I don't know, since whenever the hell they last made them. But, um, yeah, so we're just going to pop this guy apart a little bit here. And uh, many of you guys have an LRP-18 and you're struggling to find replacement parts. Just know that it's the same as an SH-18. And if you go on A-Main Hobby... Once in a while, you get really lucky and you can find the ABC piston and sleeve for an SH-18 to replace. All the guts are the same. So the complaint on this one is it doesn't want to start. Um, I don't really know anything about it. Apparently it did run one time. It's, it's, the compression's good, but uh, yeah, the one-way bearing slips like crazy. So we're just going to grab a few things here and clean that up and have a little bit of a look. Be right with you guys. Okay. After 20 minutes of searching, found us some sandpaper. I'll show you what that's for in a minute here. Okay, so we're going to remove this uh, disgusting back plate here. Get some paper towel. I'm going to clean that guy up. And I keep, I think I've explained this many times before. People go, oh, can you, can you drill start these uh, SH engines? And most of them you can't because, like I said, the one-way shaft will just fall out. And the one-way bearing will smash the crank and that'll be it. So the answer is no. You can, if you leave the pole starter attached, then sure, absolutely. But, uh, he just got this thing and he wants to do a little bit of racing down in Vancouver there where I'm from, so... And uh, go from there. So he's new to the nitro world. Well, not super new, but new, newish. And having a little bit of a rough time here, so I'm helping him out, getting them all sorted. As you guys saw, the airboat it left, it went back to its owner. People go, you can't drive that on freaking uh, pavement. Well, sure you can't, but the underside was already had damage to it. So here's our starter shaft. As you can see, it's kind of glazed up. And we're going to remove our back plate. Ooh, awful lot of fuel in the back there. There's our back plate. Inspect the O ring here. Make sure it's not damaged. Because if it is, you'll have a big air leak. Okay. And there's the inside of the motor in the back. It's awful lot of oil and fuel in there. But everything feels nice and smooth. Oh, no wonder it wouldn't start. The flywheel's loose. Check this out, guys. The crankshaft isn't broken. Because he was re uh, complaining of it not being able to start. That's why it didn't work. Well, you find out something new every day. How about that? See the piston? Turn the flywheel, the crank's not turning. Whoa. <laughs> Jeez, no wonder it was having such a hard time. Because <coughs> it was kicking and popping and snapping and backfiring and carrying on like an idiot. And it wouldn't run, so... That's why it didn't work. All right. So I'm going to go over here and just take this one-way bearing. We're just going to clean it out with some brake parts cleaner. Just kind of let it hang ten and just kind of soak. And then we'll get it cleaned out with a Q-tip after. As they do. I mean, it's going to get oiled as soon as you start it again anyway, whatever. But uh, just to kind of get any varnish out of it. Speaking of that, you guys like my clock? That's cool, eh? Here, watch for a second. I think I've had one or two comments about this uh, clock before. And uh, these these tubes are old uh, uh, Soviet-Russian-made uh, um, neon tubes. They used them in, uh, us or not escalators, but uh, counters for machinery and stuff and uh, facilities. So, like I said, it slips. So just take a little bit. This is 800 grit 3M. And just right where the one-way bearing sits, just... You're not trying to remove material. You're just trying to rough the surface. 
and just kind of break that bit of a glaze on there. That's all you're trying to do because people go, oh, well, if you sand it, you're going to reduce the size. Well, you're not trying to reduce the size. You're just trying just to break that little bit of a glaze, like whether you hone the cylinder in an engine after when you're going to put new rings in it. That's all you're doing is basically essentially honing the surface. And just give that a couple of twists, go back in the opposite direction. Like new. All right. See, that's all we're aiming for is just to take that glaze off. That's it. Not remove material. Because uh, like I said, if you remove material, then, uh, well, you're shit out of luck at that point. Okay. Pull starter works. And you can see it's an original LRP pull starter. Uh, for those of you that have an LRP and you, go, you can't find a pull starter, it's the same as a Dynamite Lossy XTM or LRP. It's all the same. It's all made by SH. So you can buy a pull starter for SH-18 and it'll work on your LRP32 or your 28 or 30 or 27 or whatever the hell you got. All right, things are looking friggin' great so far here. I'm just gonna take a little bit of brake clean, just clean out the schmutz that's inside this engine here because like I said, it's been sitting around for a while and just give it a little bit of a tidy. Clean out all that old fuel and oil in the back there. So that shit gets corrosive. A little bit of a wash. I'm not going to pull the piston and sleeve out. There's no point to it. Everything in there is fine. So, I mean, you guys saw me open this up. We're both doing this together here, so. Yeah, no, this engine's got very little runtime on it. It's in great shape still. And it's got tons of pinch, so that's great. So, but what we are going to do is... Just put a little bit, uh, since we washed all the oil away, and this is why I don't like using WD-40 because it washes oil away. Uh, I'm just gonna put some oil on the crank pin. You guys can see that. Some down in the bearing, in the back there. A little bit up in the wrist pin area. That, a little bit on the sleeve. Just just a little bit. You don't need to, don't need to smother the damn thing out, but uh, yeah. That's about it. I'll just take out and wipe the inside of the cylinder here. Let's have a look. Pretty nice in there. Just gonna take a little bit, not much. Just run your little finger around in there. Because if you put too much oil, it'll flood the damn thing out. It won't start. But just so it has a little bit of a coating when it first fires up. That's pretty much all you're looking for. And I'll soak up the extra. Perfect. Right, let's move on to that one-way bearing, shall we? Okay, so it's been sitting around, and we're going to clean it again. Just like I said, hit it with a little bit of brake clean. So you do get varnished up, the little rollers get sticky and shit, right? So just take a Q-tip, and just put a Q-tip in there, kind of clean it. You can clean it as much as you want. Um, some people even soak them in gasoline. That actually does work, if you wanted. Um, all right, let's get this guy back together in the back end here, shall we? So, of course, your one-way bearing, starter shaft. Starter shaft goes in after. You can put it in now. It's up to you. No oil goes here. Not needed. Like that. Ready to go. Then you're going to not lock, or, uh, for fuck's sakes. It doesn't matter which one of these tangs. It doesn't matter which way they point. So as long as you just line up the crank in there. I'm actually just going to sop up some more of that extra oil. Just to put a little bit too much in there. But whatever's extra does run out anyway, so not a big deal. So we're going to turn that. We're going to put our piston at the bottom. And put them together. And it won't want to go on right away. you got to turn, hold the flywheel and kind of turn the starter shaft a bit and kind of work with it. You'll feel it go click just like it did there and it'll sit nice and flush if this isn't going on straight and it won't like line up and, and push on nice and easy don't feel inclined to use a screwdriver try to torque it on because that's um that's how you break shit so these screws already got enough oil and grease on them so we're just going to put them back in no need to add any lubricant 
remember, don't lose this spring. This actually just goes in the back to keep your one-way uh, shaft from jumping around. And we need a two millimeter. So that is metric. And we are gonna put a new glow plug in here. I don't know if I have one, because this one here is gonna go in the round file. AKA the fucking the fuck it bin. And that way it's gonna be all good to go again. And crisscross tighten the screws. Always crisscross tighten your screws, just like if you're putting a wheel on a car. Same idea. Just makes things go on easier. And if you freaking worked in a shop for any length of time with an old fella, he'll he'll get a rain on your ass about it too if you don't do it. So you take our spring, stick it in the back, take your pole starter, line up that hole in the pole starter with that spring. And it's kind of hard to see it on camera, but you'll notice when it gets in there because it'll sit right in the center. Then we got three more screws. Put back in. I just thought I'd share this with you guys for a little bit here. And see, so yeah, it's like freaking the bits. They're doing baseball stuff at the park here, and the cops were uh, where I go bashing at. There's a bunch of racket and rigmarole that happened down there, so the cops have been there every day and whatever. So I'm just kind of staying away from there for now until all that stuff is kind of cleared up. Smoke here has gotten better so far, which is kind of nice. But boy, howdy, was it ever stinky outside for a while. And most of you, I'm sure, that are in Surrey or Vancouver or wherever, have seen that the pier in the U.S. is on fire the other day. Ah, much better. Perfect. Just going to soft up a little bit of that extra. There we go. And we're going to put our cylinder head back on. And remember your head gasket. There's only one. Some engines have two, some engines have three. There's our head button. That guy goes in. And our cooling head. Some people say, oh, can you run them without the cooling head? Like, sh like shave off all the fins and you can but it's pointless unless you're drag racing because the thing is the drag race engines they, they're only running for a few seconds at a time so cutting off your cylinder head uh, is for an off-road or even on-road application unless you're not drag racing is absolutely fucking retarded it's not going to yield you any benefits because um, remember this is the radiator for the engine here so if that's uh, you know not uh, not on shit's gonna get hot and it's gonna get hot in a hurry not good like I said I don't tighten the screws down one at a time some people just feel inclined to snug one down and that'll actually make the head sit sideways and you can actually warp the cylinder head when you put the other screws in so just go opposite to each other, like I said, crisscross pattern. Run them down, and then just tighten them down little bit by little bit, crisscross. Click, <laughs> click, click, and click. People said, what's the torque specifications? I have no idea, I've been doing it for so long I just know it off by heart, I know what I feel. And uh, there we go, that's a one-way bearing fist. Look at that, that's much better. Before it wouldn't even do that. It would just slip and barely turn the engine over. Okay, well, we're here. Might as well see if we can't find the right Allen key. And pull this clutch off. No, something's up here, I'm gonna have to Huh, that's not good at all. The flywheel's loose on the shaft, that's why it wouldn't run. So I'm going to pause, it'll be right back with you, trying to get that screw out of there. Okay. Well, got it off. Or, well, at least got the screw off there. I'm going to pull this clutch off, clutch bearing, 
Yeah, it's just freaking loose. Well, that's why it didn't work. Let's see. Oh, yeah, you can spin the whole thing with your fingers. <laughs> well, that's not supposed to happen. What size is that? 10 millimeter, I think? Yeah, it looks like it. I'll, I'll be right back, and I'm going to see if I can't just tighten that up really quick. Okay, so it doesn't matter how much you tighten the damn thing up, it doesn't get any tighter. So that's not a good sign. When I'm, uh, that one's farked, so I'm going to have to lay here and do this. I'm going to clean things up here a little bit and see what we got to work with here. I think because you do have to cut the crank short on here, I think what ended up happening was someone didn't cut it short enough and they couldn't get this to tighten up enough, so they gave up. Burp. Which seems logical to me. So what I might have to do is bag this engine up, whip out the grinder, and just kind of shorten that up a little bit. Is what it seems to me. Yeah, that call looks absolutely... F oh, maybe not. Oh. Yeah, this call might be duped. Let's have a look. Uh, yeah, let's call it. It's totally fried, so... But... But... I might... Just might... Somewhere in the nice sea of junk have another one. Remember where I saw the ball last. Nope. It's a plain whack a mole. Holy shit. Um, <laughs> okay, so let's call it is destroyed. Uh, I'm going to have to find one. So if you guys want to hang on just for another moment here, well, it'll be probably half an hour for me and about two seconds for you guys. I'm going to see if I can find another one. All right. Back and flash. All right. Might have just found what I needed. This one is about the same. Thought I had more of them, but I guess I don't. So hopefully this one will work. That seems a little bit more better. Oh, yeah. I think we're going to be golden here once again. Oh, yeah, that's, hopefully that's not going to be too friggin' long, because that's the smallest one I've got. Well, let's just drop that guy back in there for a moment and have a look, shall we? Put that clutch bell back on, let's see where we're at. Because hopefully, hopefully, this guy will work. Let's see where we're looking we looking all right down there. So we look right down there. Hold that lined up. Oh, yeah, we're good. We're cool. All right. Perfect. Sweetness. Okay. Yay. <laughs> okay. So I just got to find my thingamabob to tighten the thingamabob, and we're good, and I'll be right back. bad news good news is it's tightened up and right on but uh, bad news is if you hold the clutch look at it see it wobble see that shit it's not the flywheel wobbling oh maybe it is oh what the H why is it wobbling Looks like this flywheel's seen quite a rough life. You can kind of see it there. I don't know what's going on with that, but uh, you guys can definitely see the run out there. That's not good. Okay, well, I'm going to have to find some parts now. That sucks. Well, I might have one of those. I highly doubt it, but um, yeah, I'm going to have to talk to Ed about that and see if he's got another one laying around off another engine. But until then, I guess that's all we can do for now, sadly. I'm trying to figure out why that is. Because it shouldn't be shouldn't be not looking shouldn't be like that. I don't know, maybe this got dropped on its on its head or something, or got crashed into it with another vehicle and bent it. But yeah, that's uh awful lot of run out there. 
to the flywheel too. I don't know because this collet fits perfectly. So I don't know. Anyways, guys, well, not much I can do about that right now. So uh, hopefully in the next another day or so, a can of the post is absolutely screwing me right now. Um, my other part should be in for this thing here, the other the blue pen uh, or blue tub GT. Uh, which is going to be some electronics and uh, a few other parts and we're going to take off the per blue pipe we're going to put this old CVAC back on there just because it's going to get a purple cylinder head and some other little knickknacks and there's going to be some shit with the leaf blower and again some Honda parts are still on the way they're all sitting literally six blocks from where I live and they say that they've been delivered and they haven't been so I don't know anyways keep your eyes peeled for that and until next time guys keep on burning nitro Thanks for watching. That's a little freaking disappointing. But anyways, talk to you later.